All right, welcome back to Salt City Counseling. Once again, my name is Scott Carter. I'm a licensed therapist here in the beautiful state of Utah. Hope everybody's doing good out there. And in this video, I'm going to talk about whether or not we have chemical imbalances in our brain, and that is the cause of mental illness in general, and whether or not you need more chemicals to fix those chemical imbalances in your brain. Uh, I've worked in mental health uh, for 20 years now. This is my 20th year working in mental health, and so... I'm pretty, pretty well versed, pretty well experienced, and pretty well seasoned in all these fields. If you're new here, <clears throat> I, I specialize a lot in teens, family work, parenting, uh, high conflict, divorce, and custody, personality disorders, and the like. But generally speaking, I'm, I'm pretty knowledgeable. I, cl I currently work as a clinical director. I have a great job. I work for great people who are very good to me, and we are... Um, I'm very fortunate to work in a clinic where we are combining multi -dis multiple disciplines so that you can come to our clinic and you can get a uh, prescription if you need it. Uh, we also we have some alternative treatments. We've worked with nutritionists and all kinds of stuff. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about, once again, whether or not your mental illness is due to a chemical imbalance. This is a commonly held widespread belief. Um, I've never seen, by the way... And, and I'm like, I'm going to be honest. Um, I decided to make this video, but I'm feeling defensive. Like I have to defend myself because there's always people that get upset about this. And uh, there are people that, that they, it, it's like you can't even have a conversation about it. You can't even ask questions. You can't even question the narrative. They're just upset. No, you're a therapist. You're supposed to believe in this. But just as a side note, I've never actually seen any, any real da data on this. I've never seen any actual research studies. I've never seen any empirically based. I've never seen any peer reviewed uh, um, articles or anything, any studies that say, yes, you're born with some sort of chemical imbalance. If this narrative was true, then we should be able to show it with, with research, right? I don't believe it exists. I could be wrong. I don't, I don't thumb through I don't thumb through journals, folks, <laughs> so I could be wrong. Uh, feel free to comment below, but I'm coming from 20 years here of, of experience, and so let's get into it. Let's get into this. But before I do, before I do, a little bit of uh, business. If you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. Help my channel grow. I'm approaching my first 150 subscribers. Woo! Help me get to a million. Help me get to my first million uh, by hitting subscribe, like, uh, comment notifications you know what to do uh, if you really like my content hit the tip jar all those links are in the description below if you have a viewer question you want to ask about maybe uh, working with kiddos uh, teenage stuff family stuff high conflict divorce custody personality disorders you can send me a email scottsy at saltcitycounseling.com and you will remain anonymous i will not disclose your name or where you're from or anything like that so um, and go check out my other channel, Wisdom and Brews. Link is also in the description. So, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about whether or not mental illness is due to a chemical imbalance in your brain. Now, we we need to we need to narrow this down. We need to get really specific about mental illnesses. Now, most people really are just struggling with generalized anxiety or major depression. Uh, most people uh, just sort of have those, but then we kind of get outside of things. We have obsessive compulsive things like obsessive compulsive disorder, maybe bipolar disorder, uh, maybe uh, things like schizophrenia, and and then you know you kind of go off in a different direction. And there's trauma, there's personality disorders, and, and all of that. Now, if you ask me, the only probably the only clusters in here that might have something to do with chemical issues in the brain are in the schizophrenia and bipolar family and I'll do a separate video I think on schizophrenia uh, this has kind of come up recently at work uh, some schizophrenia uh, situations and, and I really want to talk about it a lot so you know if you if you want that video you know if you want to see my video on schizophrenia coming up obviously hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and but when I talk about the chemical imbalances, I'm talking generally about, let's say, depression, anxiety, OCD, trauma, uh, personality disorders, and those types of things. Okay, I reject the notion that uh, people with especially like depression, for example, have chemical imbalances in their brain. Um, 
I don't I don't buy it. And I know several clinicians, um, including my in-house um, uh, psychologist, my neuropsychologist, uh, that that agrees with me that um, depression is not due depression, especially generalized anxiety, just kind of your run of the mill day to day mental health issues are not chalked up to uh, a chemical imbalance that you're just born this way. And there's something wrong or flawed with your brain. And as someone who's had 20 years experience in mental health, hear me out. There's always those people where they're just angry. They're just furious. No, no, it's a chemical imbalance or whatever. And, and I'm not exactly sure why they're so committed to that narrative. It's kind of perplexing to be honest. It's a little bit confusing to me, but, um, yeah, I, again, why do, what do we lose by having an additional conversation about it? But again, I'm coming from 20 or so years of experience and I can tell you definitively the people who I've seen their depression or their anxiety really improve, have done really well in therapy and don't really chalk much up to, to medication, especially like SSRIs. I, I am not a believer in SSRIs. If you don't know SSRI, ser selective serotonin re reuptake inhibitor, uh, Selexa, Prozac, things like that. Those are SSRIs. Antidepressants. I've rarely, rarely met people that get really, really good results on, on those. It's, it's, it's a low percentage. However, I've met, m seen many, 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 many people that have gotten good benefit out of really good therapy when they've learned to take it into their own hands. I come from the angle of your mental health is in your hands. You can learn to take control of this. Uh, you can empower yourself. You can do a lot of things different. You can make life changes that will have a significant impact on your mental health. Um, I, this chemical, your brain is chemically imbalanced. You're just born that way. There's something wrong with you. I, I really honestly believe that, that this is uh, maybe a, a narrative perpetuated by a company that just wants to sell you pills or companies, these massive billion dollar conglomerates, whatever. They want you to believe that. They, they're they invested in you believing that. That's, that's what they want, right? So um, with all of that in mind, okay? I, I, again, I reject the notion that your brain is completely imbalanced and there's nothing that you can do about it. Sometimes I talk to people and they go, well, you know, I just sort of have to sit around and hope that the chemicals in my brain um, uh, kind of sort themselves out so I'll feel better. And and I did this just the other day. I'm like, okay, well, let's do an, a little bit of an experiment because I have someone in the office that, that was talking about this, was telling me, no, I have this chemical imbalance. And so I just have to sit around and hope that it sorts itself out. I'm like, well, let's just do an experiment here. And so I asked a, a series of questions. Um, number one, what is, tell me about some of your favorite foods. What is your favorite ice cream? What's your favorite, what's your favorite restaurant? What is, your, what is a favorite thing to eat? Tell me about a great memory that you have. One of the best days of your life. Could describe in detail. Who were you with? What did you do? What was the activity that you did? Now describe to me your, the, the perfect life. Describe to me what, what you're doing, who you are, where you are, who you're with. Um, what, does, what does a good life really look like to you? And the more that, that this person was answering these questions, the more they were smiling. And I, and I said, why did I ask you all of this? Because I wanted to show you that we, that look, we just manipulated the chemicals in your brain. We manipulated the chemicals in your brain to help you feel good. And now you are, it worked, right? And the fact of the matter is there's tons and tons of things that you can do for yourself to sort out those chemicals uh, you can manipulate those chemicals in your brain. For the most part, emotions and feelings, they're just following orders. If you go around in life like, I hate my job, I hate my life, I hate my family, I hate my spouse, I hate everybody, the world is an awful place, human beings are the worst things ever, of course you're going to feel like crap. Your emotions are following orders. Like if you say, I hate everything, then your emotions are like, okay, I guess that's what we're doing now. And then here they come. Here come those... those um, uh, neurotransmitters, those chemicals in your brain that make you feel like crap. You can make tons and tons and tons of changes. And I'm coming from a place of experience, not just working in mental health for 20 years, but also from a place of that I, I've been there, done that. I've, I've had significant major depression in my life. And 
and really, uh, I mean, I, I took medication and what I, and what really cured it. I don't, I don't use the word cure as a therapist. I feel like cure is something you do to bacon. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't like to use the word cure, but the way that I got rid of it is by making a ton of personal changes. One of them was getting religion out of my life. I'm just being honest. I'm not, I'm not bagging on all religions, but the one I was raised in was particularly not good. Brought me down. Uh, and the more I made changes, the better I felt. The more I stopped apologizing for, for living the way that I, that worked for me, for example. When I stopped caring what other people think of me. Those are things that just create emotional freedom. So that's my thoughts on chemical imbalances in the brain. And uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate your viewership. And uh, comment below. Tell me what you think. Uh, share the video if you agree. All that. Whatever. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.